السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام Uh, how are you doing? Yeah, fine, doctor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, have you agreed on uh, uh, the schedule of the uh, of the lectures for for this course? I think we already agree on what this name at this time. So it's a, we're gonna follow exactly the um, the schedule for. Uh, for this course, like uh, uh, Monday and uh, Wednesday at eight, or are you going to change it to be in one day, both lectures in one day? I think we all agree on on one day at what this day. On Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, so starting at uh, six or what? On eight or five. at this time, at, at the same time. At eight? Yeah, at this time, at eight. But it's going to be a little bit late because actually you're going to take two lectures. If you're going to combine them in one day, then we will have two lectures. So we're going to finish by 11. So it's going to be too late. Okay. okay. So can, can we, do, do you have other lectures uh, before this lecture? Do you have any other opinion? Okay, okay uh, Muhammad, Muhammad, can you hear me, Muhammad? Uh, we we can hear you, Muhammad. Can we? Can. Uh, Reno, please uh, try to mute your uh, voice. Try to mute your uh, your audio while you're not speaking. Okay, well, just just unmute yes, it whenever you want to speak. Okay. Or not. Uh, Assalamu alaikum Abdullah. Ahlan salam. Have you agreed that uh... Hey, you are talking to the people who are in the past. Actually, you, if we start at eight, uh, when we start at eight, we're gonna finish like ten thirty or ten something like that. It's gonna be a little bit. Cannot have it a little bit earlier. Do you have other lectures right before this one? Okay, so you have you have other lectures. Which, which lecture? Which which course? Lecture, uh, I have another like lecture before the. Uh, before, which course? Uh, for this lecture, uh, four seven. Wait, uh, so, uh, sorry, I'll check it. Uh, this is actually the time that we most of these students they agreed upon. But uh, we we can, I mean, all my friends are here. They can, they can say their opinions. But I believe they have a course. That, uh, there isn't much you can do actually. If they have a course, if they had another course right before this one, then uh, we don't have any options. Uh, um, I think. It's 
No, before this one, I don't, I don't really have one. I mean, uh, Dr. Amr also... Right before this one, yes. he can talk. Yes, the, the, Dr. Yeah, he, what he said that uh, was uh, that uh, the imaging course, the, the Dr. Yeah. Amr Al-Khazmi, yeah. is right before this one. But usually you can arrange with Dr. Amr. Have you had any lectures with Dr. Amr? Uh, usually you, you would have also the same thing in uh, with Dr. Amr. So, uh, have one day for the course, so basically you have both lectures right after each other. So I suggest that uh, we start at six o'clock. Six o'clock. Okay, that's fine. So basically, uh, he will have both lectures starting at six, and then uh, I'll. Have at six on Wednesday next Wednesday. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Dr. Amr about that through Blackboard, okay? But okay, if we if we could agree on that, then we will have our lecture starting at eight on Wednesday. At six, okay, okay no, no problem. So basically, we're gonna try to make it starting at six, but if it didn't work, then we're gonna start at eight. Would that be okay on Wednesday? Basically, okay, that's fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get started on the uh, topics of. I'm not going to go very far, uh, just one thing on MATLAB, but we're going to formally start from next time. And basically, uh, starting from next time, after each lecture, you will have something to do, okay? Part of uh, of the research uh, research problem that I ask you to finish it as well. Being clearly. So basically, this is the textbook that we're going to start with. Uh, you have access. Uh, one thing, uh, please uh, mute your mic while you're not speaking, okay? So that you don't have any, uh, uh, you don't cause any noise for the other people. Unmute the, the, the mic whenever you want to speak, okay? Actually, I have a copy for you on Blackboard, but you, you have legal access to have this book in electronic. This is not a hack. This is not a... Okay? So... Because I, I keep hearing uh, the tones, okay? Start talking about why uh, we care about images in, uh, in medicine. So basically, we care about it because we have something called medical imaging. And usually for imaging, it's basically a methodology to measure and map a useful property of uh, the human tissues. So basically, it's, it's usually either non-invasive or minimally invasive. And uh, go through the, the human body without having to Invasive can be something like when you, if you if you have like uh, endoscopy or something like that, you have something that goes inside the human body to take images. Okay. Uh, usually, you create the image using uh, three different main techniques. Reflection basically just like photography, and basically, if basically the light gets reflected, you get that reflection. These, the examples of uh, reflection uh, basically are used in uh, things like uh, skin imaging, uh, in things like retinal imaging, things of that sort. So photography, actual photography, using a camera, a regular camera, is actually a medical imaging modality. 
Ultrasound also uh, use the same thing. The, the same concept is used, used in ultrasound. So you send ultrasound rays and basically they get reflected from the human body and basically the reflected echoes are used to form an image. Uh, transmission also can be used like an X-rays where you have rays coming uh, in from one direction and basically you collect them after they pass through the body. The pass through the body actually changes the properties of the rays and basically they form an image that uh, can have very useful information about the internal structures of a human being. You can, you can use also radiation, radiation meaning that the human body radiates the, the, the rays. Basically, in, in the transmission, you generate X-rays from here, from an external device, and it passes through the body. In the radiation, you basically, the body itself radiates uh, some, kind of, some kind of electromagnetic uh, radiations, and you collect them and form an image using them. Examples of radiation-based imaging techniques are MRI, PET, and SPECT. For MRI, you basically communicate with the uh, with the protons or the nuclei of the uh, of the hydrogen uh, atoms. You basically send uh, an RF pulse, and this RF pulse uh, basically has some energy, and uh, this energy is absorbed by the nuclei. When you stop the RF pulse, the hydrogen nuclei basically start emitting the same radiation again, and basically collect this radiation and form the MRI image. Basically, we started seeing uh, digital uh, uh, systems uh, basically started from probably 1990s. And there's a big difference between analog and digital uh, uh, imaging systems. Uh, for analog systems, like for example, uh, X-ray, regular X-ray or conventional X-ray, you have films, okay, like uh, what, what you would have in that old camera. And these films are put in cassettes. And these cassettes are basically uh, exposed to uh, the X-ray radiation coming out of your human body when you expose the, the, the patient to radiation. And then you have an X-ray film processor. And this X-ray film processor actually uh, basically uh, processes, processes the, uh, the films and basically generate a film that is processed that looks like this. You display the film on uh, an X-ray lamp, like it can look like this, like a portable lamp, or it can be a, like a wall-mounted lamp like this, and basically the doctor looks at the image, looks at the film, and makes the diagnosis. Uh, right now, this technique or this approach has been very largely uh, replaced by uh, digital imaging systems. Instead of having films, you have like uh, a plate like this, like a digital uh, or a, a, yeah, a sensor plate like this that collects the uh, X-ray radiation and basically stores the radiation levels or the, the, the intensity that was received in, 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 in digital form on the, on, the, on the plate itself. And basically you just take this plate, it, it basically can look, can look like this, and basically connect it to a reader. And this reader basically generates a digital image. And this digital image uh, basically can be displayed on a computer monitor instead of uh, a lamp. And basically you can do whatever, all the manipulation you want on this digital image. Uh, this is the reason why we're discussing the image manipulation, because when we display the image on a computer, a lot of things can happen. Sometimes the doctor wants to focus on a certain part in the image, so basically he wants to magnify the image. Whenever you magnify the image, some things happen in the image itself. And the quality of the image might not be exactly the same when you do that. So we would like to know how to do that in, in the proper way. Okay, so that you can maintain the quality of the medical image. We would like also to know the difference between different image receptors, for example. Sometimes the image receptor can give you an image of 1,000 by 1,000 or 2,000 by 2,000. Would it matter to have an image of 1,000, uh, resolution 1,000 instead of 2,000? This is a question that I would like to answer, okay? Uh, how can we describe the quality of the image? How can we describe the resolution of the image? How can we manipulate the image? How can we rotate the image? Things of that sort that we'd like to get started with. You have any questions? Okay, uh, please, please interrupt me whenever you have a question. Don't wait until I finish. Just inter inter interrupt me anytime you want to have a question in the, in the things I'm talking about. So to give you an example of 
uh, the difference between using analog films versus digital images. Uh, if you if you collect an image of the knee that looks like this, and it's in the form of a film, that's it. You can't do much about it. Basically, the contrast here is really very bad, and it's very difficult to see exactly. That basically, if you want to track the outside or the outline of the bone, it's extremely difficult to do that. The contrast between the bone and the external or the surrounding soft tissues is really very, very low, okay? Uh, if you have a digital image, you can do something called contrast enhancement. We're going to see how to do that. Basically, one of the things that we're going to discuss in this part of the course is how to do contrast enhancement. If you, if you have contrast enhancement and you, if you have your image in a digital form, you can take an image that looks like this and basically generate an image that would look like this. And this would be actually much more useful for the doctor to, to be able to diagnose th this patient. If you have an image that looks like this in a film-based uh, system, you have to take another shot. You have to basically uh, repeat the exposure again so that you can get a better image. For digital images, actually, you're much more secure in, in terms of the settings of the, of the X-ray exposure. So basically, you can have a very wide range of exposures, and you would still get a very good image because of the image processing involved. Okay, so basically, we're going to see a few techniques uh, on basic contrast enhancement and see how, how to do that. Can you still see the, uh, okay. Okay, if we get started on digital image characteristics, if you have an image, even on the computer, if you download an image, uh, we know that images are composed of pixels. So basically the digital image is not continuous like the film, for example. The film is a continuous medium. So basically if you, if you magnify it, you will see that things will remain the same. Basically it's like having an analog device or, or, or something that is real. Basically if you magnify it, you're gonna still see that it's continuous, okay? For images uh, on the computer, they are digital. And in order for them to be digital, they have to be sampled and they have to be quantized. Sampling means that, maybe I can show it to you in a, a Can you see my screen now? Can you see this uh, different screen? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So basically, if you have something, let, let's just consider a signal, okay? If you have a signal, an analog signal that looks like this, okay? Basically, this is continuous in terms of time and in terms of amplitude. Meaning that basically the number of points here is infinity. And the number of levels here, so basically if we take the magnitude itself and see the number of levels here, you'll find that it's infinity. So analog has infinite resolution. So if you have a signal f of x, for example, uh, basically x is real and f of x is real. Real meaning that it's uh, basically, uh, it has a, a wide range. It has all the, can take any number between minus infinity and infinity. and you have no resolution, you have no steps. So basically, if, I, if you give me a, a, a number like, uh, for example, if I have this signal here, you have a signal that looks like this, um, okay? And this level is one, and this level is two, for example, okay? If I, if I stop here, if I, I can get here at 1.1. If I get a point here, it's gonna be like 1.05. If I get a point here, it's gonna be 1.02, for example, okay? If you keep making or magnifying this part, you can get basically a, a, a million points here, a million decimal points here, okay? Million, million, million digital uh, decimal numbers, okay? Uh, this is not realistic in terms of a representation in a computer. If you have something that has 
infinite points you have basically uh, infinity points and each point is represented in an infinity bits so basically you have infinity bits per point then basically if you look at this you don't have any storage to, to, to be able to do that. You, you don't have the, the enough storage on, on a computer to be able to use uh, the computer to store a signal that looks like this. So what you would normally do is basically try to do something called quantization and something called basically uh, 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 sampling, okay? So basically, instead of having something that would look like this, no, I'm going to have only points in certain locations and also, as, as far as the magnitude, I'm going to also do something like this. So basically, instead of taking all the points, no, I'm going to take this, 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 and I'm not going to take anything in the middle. Okay, the same thing here. If you have levels, for, for example, have something that looks like this, and the levels are exactly the, the, the levels in the, in the page here. So basically, this would be a level, this would be a level, this would be level if you take something that looks like this actually it's going to be approximated to this level if you have a point that looks like this it will be approximated to this level so you have basically here sampling this is sampling this is time and this is basically what you have here is like quantization And this is amplitude. So the, the, the goal of this actually from sampling is to have a finite number of points. So basically, instead of having infinity points, no, you can convert that to n points. And instead of having infinity, infinity bits per uh, pixel, you're going to have a finite number of bits here, like n bits. Okay, so basically, as long as you have finite numbers for the number of points and the number of levels for each point, you can represent that on a computer. <clears throat> Images are a generalization of a signal like this. A, basically, an image is a two-dimensional signal. So you do exactly the same for an image. So basically, you have to do sampling and you have to do quantization. So if you have a, a, a digital image, basically, this, this digital image would be basically uh, sampled on a matrix instead of sampled uh, basically just uh, in uh, certain uh, time points. No, we have here space. So basically you will have points that looks like this. Each one of these points will be termed pixel. Okay, so these pixels are, are, not, are not basically are not continuous. Are, they are basically discrete version or sampled version of the original structure or the original image that we are acquiring and also each one of these so this is sampling and each point of these each one of these points basically if you look at for example uh, um, any one of these points okay will be represented in a certain number of bits like eight bits for example okay so basically this is a quantization part if you change the sampling or change the quantization, this will definitely affect the quality of the image. Okay, so what we were discussing, what we were showing in this slide here, what we are going to actually deal with, if we have an image that looks like this, okay, if you have a lower resolution, this is like 300 dots per inch. This is one of the experiments that are used for sampling. Dots per inch, it's basically you have a uh, dot is basically a sample, a, a, an image sample. Per inch, so each inch will have 300 points. So you, you sample each inch into 300 points. Okay? For this one here, it's 72 dots per inch. So basically, even though it's, it, it might look actually basically just four times, it's basically just uh, this is the uh, fourth, the, the resolution of this. So basically here, here you have 300, which is almost four times uh, 72. It's more, a little bit more than that, but the image would look really bad like this. 
So basically, if you have, uh, uh, if you change the sampling, this will make a lot of difference to your image. So you have to be sure that the sampling that you're going to do to your image is sufficient so that you can get an image with a very high quality. How about if you have an image that is acquired this way? So basically, if you have an image that would be acquired in a very, very low resolution like this. Some of the images that we see like this are, uh, for example, the images that are acquired in, uh, for example, spectroscopy in MRI. They have like an, a resolution of eight by eight. Okay, if you have a resolution of eight by eight, it, you're not gonna see much. You're gonna see a really poor resolution image. Okay, so, if you want to display it in a, in a much better resolution, there are ways of improving the resolution or displaying the 8x8 in a much better way using something called interpolation. Okay, If you use a, a good interpolation, you can get a much better uh, quality image from a very low resolution image. Okay? So basically, uh, this is what, uh, what we're going to actually see in this course, basically how to take an image that would look like this and basically try to get something that would look like this, okay? So um, the quantization part that we talked about, maybe you can get started with this quantization part. Uh, let me load one of the images that I gave you and probably just show you a demonstration before we can get back to this one here, okay? Uh, first of all, what you're going to see in, uh, on Blackboard is a file that looks like this. This is the handout, not this one here. Uh, the, uh, uh, no, no, this is a textbook. Um, you will basically see the, uh, you have, um, you have an, a, 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 a MATLAB file that looks like this. You have uh, some images. Uh, you have like a DICOM image that looks like this. You have uh, MRI case based data that looks like, like this. And basically you have other images that you can also download. But basically, uh, if you have any one of these images, you can actually uh, change the, the quantization of the image and see how it looks like. Let's try that now. First of all, let's, let's just run the image.m uh, file and basically see what we're going to get. Basically, in this uh, file, basically it has uh, different parts and each part deals with one of the parts that we're going to do in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the research problem. I'm just going to run it, okay? and just show you each one of the outputs. Basically, this is the case space of MRI. This is the actual reconstructed MRI image. This is an image reconstructed incorrectly. And this is also one of the images that is reconstructed incorrectly. Okay, this is also, this is, these are different uh, things that we're going to try to understand the, 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 the process of image reconstruction. Uh, this is basically the CT image. Uh, let me start with um, with one of the images here. Let me see the image uh, name and basically show you how to display it. Um, here the image. We basically construct the image uh, as uh, I am. So basically, let me clear everything here. And basically, if you use image, can you see the uh, MATLAB code? Can you see the code? Is it, yes. uh, is it uh, yes, loud yes, enough for you to see? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm just going to display the image. Let me uh, say this image equals to absolute of image just to make sure that it's uh, real. And oh, OK, it cleared all the variables. OK, that's fine. I'm just write it again. So I'm going to close all the uh, windows. I'm just going to say close all. And then I'm going to display the image. Um, uh, when you display the image using image SC, image basically, uh, image SC draws the image after scaling. But usually when you uh, display an image in MATLAB, it assumes that the image is in color. So if you want to see the image in the gray, gray scale uh, uh, rather than color, just say color app gray. So basically, you're going to see the image as you see here in gray. Okay. 
what I'm going to do now is to try to make this image basically this this image actually is real numbers so basically the quantization is not implemented here I'm going to make it implemented I'm going to make the uh, image instead of having uh, a very large uh, number of levels for each pixel I'm going to have it to have it basically in a very limited number of levels okay so let's uh, see how we do that, how we should do that, and basically get back to here and try to do it. If I have, uh, if I have a number, for example, x, and this x is real, I want x to have only one level or have only, uh, for example, um, uh, n bits okay how how can we convert a real number into uh, a discrete number that has a limited number of uh, pixels or limited number of bits how can we do that so basically instead of having infinite number of levels I'm, I, I want to have only uh, a few levels so the way to do that basically we look at the range of x the range of x is from minimum x to the maximum of x, right? This is the range, okay? This is the range of numbers for x. I would like to have this range, this range that I'm talking about here. Basically, I want to have this range uh, containing only 2 to the n levels. How can we do that? we have to divide that into basically two to the n levels. Let's consider n, for example, as four. Okay, so how many levels? How many levels should we have? 64. To the, to 64. the power four, 16. 16. To the power four. To the so power four. Power four. Okay? Yes, yes. So, the way I do that is basically if I divide x, uh, if I take x, for example, and divide it by the range, its range, or basically just add the minimum, and then divide by, or minus the minimum, sorry. x minus x minus minimum x of x over maximum of x minus minimum of x. If I, if I do this operation here, what would be the output? Let, let's just call the output here x dash, okay? What would be the range of x dash? Just imagine that you, when you have x, x somewhere here, if you divide this, by the whole thing here, then the new x, the new x dash that comes out of this mapping will have a range between zero and one. Why? When x is minimum x, then minimum x minus minimum x is zero, so it's gonna be zero. When you have x equal to maximum of x, then you will have maximum of x minus minimum of x over the same thing, so it's gonna be one. So when we do this mapping, we mapped everything, with, you know, regardless of uh, the range of x, we mapped x into a range of zero to one. The next thing we should do is basically, basically if, I, if I have x dash, if I take x dash, and multiply it by the number of levels, 16, and then take the integer of that. Just take the integer value of this range. What would be the output here? If it's zero, then zero by 16 is gonna be zero. If it's 16, if, if it's one, sorry, if it's one, if x dash is one, then one by 16 is gonna be what? 16. So basically, if I take this range, or if I take this mapping, and multiply it by two to the power n, 
then I map my X into a discrete or a quantized version of X that has only N levels. Okay? Let's try it in numbers on MATLAB and basically come back and see how we, we do that to the image. Let's just generate a numbers, uh, just a, an any array, okay? Let's just take an array, a random array, okay? Uh, in order to generate a random array, we just say rand of, for example, uh, 10, okay? A random number generator in MATLAB uh, gives you numbers between 0 and 1, okay? I would like to have random numbers uh, basically whatever, from 0 to whatever, okay? Or let's just start with this with this particular X, okay? It has different levels. It's basically the numbers here are real. I would like to do the mapping that we talked about and basically come up with the, 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 the quantized version of X. Okay. Um, when I say rand of 10, basically generates 10 by 10 matrix. I would like to have 10 numbers only. Okay, so basically in order to have 10 numbers, then I'll have to make it like this, like the pair and one. Okay. So basically, if I have 10 and 1, and basically we have a range that looks like this, I'm going to have x1 equal to x minus minimum of x over maximum of x minus minimum of x. The same equation that we just showed. So see here, the numbers here are between 0 and 1. Okay, so basically we did the mapping, okay? Let's take, uh, for example, let's just take X and basically uh, instead of having uh, numbers between zero and one, we're going to multiply this by any number, okay? Whatever. So this, this basically will be numbers between zero and this number here that I put, which is a random number, okay? And let us just add uh, another number so that we can have them different, okay? For example, here, okay? So you have numbers that look like this. You have negative numbers, you have positive numbers, everything. Let's do the same exact mapping here. See the number here? Regardless if you have negative numbers, positive numbers, you ended up with numbers between 0 and 1 after this mapping. Once you do that, you still notice that the numbers here are still real. We would like to map these to n number of bits. So basically, uh, uh, 16 levels, okay? So basically, if I take this x1, and basically, uh, if I multiply by x1, multiply by 16, it will give you numbers that look like this. These numbers, we have 13, 8, but still we have some decimal points. I would like to basically fix this, or uh, basically get the, the uh, around it, basically, to, to get the nearest integer so that I can have a quantized version of this. So basically, if I take this, instead of multi just multiplying, I'm just going to round it. See now? We ended up with a digital version of the original X with a number of levels between basically 0 and 60. Okay? Uh, if you notice here, if the numbers here start by zero, start with zero, and end with 16. If you have four bits, you actually start with zero and end with what? For a four-bit number, you start, you, you end with 16 or with 15? If you want to have 16 levels, you have zero, one, two, three, until what? Until 15 or 16? 15. So basically, yeah. in order to have yeah. the range between 0 and 15, here instead of having x x1 times times 16, I make it 15. Okay. So basically, now the numbers are between 0 and 15. So basically, we did now uh, some quantization to this particular uh, signal. Okay. Let's just take the code, and basically what I'm going to do now is uh, I write a new code and basically make it more general. 
So basically, I'll take the code that we did here, and the code that we're going to uh, the code we, we talked about here. Actually, we're going to uh, I'm going to upload it. Um, I'm going to upload it in uh, in uh, Blackboard so that you can have it. So basically, I'm, ha I'm going to have here numbers like this, and basically, instead of instead of having uh, uh, just 16 like hard coded number of levels, I'm going to make it general. Okay. I'm going to say that n is the number of bits. So basically, let's just consider n now as 5. Okay. And basically, um, let's just say that this is the number of bits that we're going to use of quantization. And uh, instead of having numbers that, are, that, that, are, that look random, let's look at something that would look um, a little bit realistic. So basically, so that we can identify it, uh, let's just take x as a sinusoidal signal. So we'll say that uh, x is a sine twice pi times n, uh, just well, 0 to, for example, 1,000, OK, over a um, period of, uh, for example, um, 200, OK? And I'm going to plot it just to see how it looks like originally. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing here to this signal, OK? So basically, instead of having, um, I'm, I'm, I don't really need to do that because actually it has a range. Um, uh, instead of having uh, to multiply by 16, I'm going to multiply by uh, 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay. So basically, x2 is equal to x1 and to the power n minus 1. And basically, I'm going to round it right away here. We don't really need those. Comment. And then I'm going to plot it. Uh, in order for us to plot the two in the same uh, plot, I'm going to have a figure here, figure one. Uh, and basically, if you say subplot two, one, one, basically it's going to divide the figure area into two figures. Uh, it makes two by one and plot the first figure in the first one. Here I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to plot it in the second one. Just to see the difference between the two signals, the quantize and the original. Let's just see how it looks like. Okay, um, let's just quantize prediction one codes. Okay, see here, this is the original version and this is the quantized version. Okay, now the quantized version, as you see here, instead of having a very smooth transition here, you're going to have steps, as you see here. Can you see the steps here? You all see the steps? Yeah. Let's just magnify it a little bit. See here? Okay, this is basic. I'm, I'm showing you the example of a signal, but actually next time we're gonna see that on an image, on an actual image, and you will see the same effect that we just saw here. Basically these pixelations that we saw here, you're gonna see also as a, as a result of the quantization that we saw here. Okay, let's change exactly the same code here. We're gonna change the number of levels to, for example, two. What would happen here? To do that, see how it looks like? Almost very different signal from the original one. But basically, regardless of the level of the signal, basically it will adapt. Let's see the, uh, if we basically if we multiply the sign by any number. For example, 1000, okay? See here, it's 1,000 here, but actually when you quantize, it, it's still going to come up like 0, 1, 2, 3. It's going to take these levels regardless of the original one because it adapts. Okay? If I also add 
something here, like if I add in a number, okay, like this, for example, okay, any number. See here, it's gonna start with, with a very strange number, but actually here is gonna be exactly the same. So the process of quantization, it basically takes a, a, an analog signal or a real signal of any magnitude, of any range, and maps it to uh, 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 yeah, digital levels from zero to two to, to the power n minus one. Are we clear on the process of quantization? Okay. So basically, uh, this is just an example for for a one-dimensional signal. Uh, what we're going to do, basically, next time is I'm going to give you an image. I'm gonna basically give you one or ask you to download any image, any digital image of your uh, prefer preference and basically do exactly the same. Uh, and what I can do now also is just generate an image. I can generate an image here. So basically this is one dimensional signal. I can generate an image here. Uh, in order to generate an image, we can have an image like, uh, um, a Gaussian image, for example. Gaussian image is basically, if you have a Gaussian window, or we can have, um, there are actually some images that are present in uh, in, uh, in MATLAB, but uh, let's just uh, uh, choose one image that, that is easy to, 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 to try. Uh, let's just take an, a random image or a Gaussian window, okay? Uh, I, I don't really remember the code for the Gaussian window, but let's just try this here. Gauss win. Okay, it's Gaussian window. It's basically, it's an endpoint Gaussian window, but actually it doesn't look like a two-dimensional window. Um, then I have to go and uh, look for it in, uh, in Google. So basically two-dimensional Gaussian. Uh, basically, the, the way I search for the functions basically is what I want you to do when you try to find the function. So basically, I actually intentionally try to do that in order for you to um, to learn that basically you, you don't have to remember the function, the, the, the names of the functions. You just can search for them. Two dimension Gaussian window or Gaussian function at lab. So basically, you have here a, a function here, you have here another function. Um, I think uh, there are other functions actually to the Gaussian window. Maybe. Mm. Uh, yes, it's here. The dimension Gaussian, okay. Maybe it's this one. It's a filter. I, I would like to have the, the, the actual, uh, no, no, this is not the function. No, it's not this one. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Uh, if it's the other one, okay. Actually, they are generating the, the function, you know, but actually it's right there, actually. But it's uh, also they wrote it themselves. Like there's, a, there's an existing function, but uh, basically I don't remember where it was, but uh, it's fine. Uh, can go back and uh, just use uh, a random image. Okay, so basically I'm going to generate a, a, another uh, image uh, that looks like random numbers. Um, and n of uh, say 10 or 100, okay? It would be a 100 by 100 and basically figure two so that I have a different figure and basically display the image. Let's see what comes out of this. See the image here, it looks random, okay? Let's have it as grayscale. So, right color map. Gray. Looks like this. Okay. Okay. Um, if we try to uh, take an image that looks like this and basically do this quantization, 
basically we're gonna do exactly the same thing. So basically you're gonna take the same exact functions that we use here and basically apply them to the image. So basically, um, let's just say image one is this. Let's replace each X by image. Uh, the problem here you, in MATLAB is that the minimum and maximum functions, we work only with one-dimensional one signals, okay? So, for example, if I go back here, I have uh, x equal to, uh, for example, rand of 3. This is a, 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 a 3 by 3 matrix. If I say maximum of x, it's going to come up like, like this. It basically computes the maximum along each one of the first dimension of the, the matrix. So basically, if, if the first dimension is three, then it gives you three numbers. And basically, each one of these numbers is the maximum of the, the first row, the second row, and the third row. So if you want to have the maximum of this matrix, you have to say maximum of maximum of x. Okay? because it's two dimensional. Uh, if you have multiple dimensional image, this, this can become a problem, okay? So basically what you can do is, uh, instead of doing that, you can do it in another way. You should just say maximum of X of O. X of uh, colon, say that basically all the elements in X. So if you do it this way, you're gonna get the maximum that you would like. So basically here, Instead of saying minimum of image, just image, I'm going to have to add this. And also, if you do it like this, then this will be quantized. This will be basically the, the image one here at the end will have a range between zero and one. Then I'm going to have image two basically as exactly like I did before, image one times the same exact range. Okay, so it's gonna give you a binary image of whatever you had here. Okay, so let's try to see this also as multiple images so that we see that. Let's have three. Okay. I'm going to see the image after I made it between 0 and 1. And then after I actually com continued with the, uh, with the full quantization. OK? So if we do that, we're going to have three images. Uh, this is a problem. Okay, here, this is three. So just close all. Uh, in order for you to not uh, see the, the, not see these numbers, okay, uh, whenever you generate a matrix, uh, basically you just say put a semicolon. If you have an operation, just put a semicolon so that you don't see these numbers, okay? So uh, if you do that, It might not be clear here. Let let's just uh, change the number of uh, 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 the number of quantization into one bit. One bit means that it's going to be binary. Okay. If we do that, see here the image that had uh, basically uh, real numbers in in its in its amplitude. If you map it between zero and one, it would look exactly the same because basically it's still real numbers. Then basically, if you scale, if you use image SC, it scales the range of the image into the range of the uh, of the display. So basically, it's gonna look exactly the same. But when you quantize, if you quantize into two levels, then you have only two levels, either zero or one. So it would look something that looks like this. It's it's very different from the original. Uh, of course, this is a random number, 
the matrix. So basically, you don't have any uh, idea about what it looks like. So it's very difficult to judge uh, whether the quantization is sufficient or not. If you have four bits or six bits or whatever. Uh, next time, inshallah, we're going to try a, an image that has a, a familiar appearance so that when we do the quantization, you will realize how uh, deteriorated uh, or better the image will become after the quantization, okay? So do you understand what, how quantization is done? You have any questions about quantization? Okay. So basically, I'm I'm, I'm not gonna uh, talk more about this. Uh, I, I'm just gonna basically stop at this uh, uh, at this point here, so that uh, uh, for those of you who don't have MATLAB, they can get MATLAB. And basically, uh, by the time we meet next time. We will have uh, basically you have all of you having MATLAB and basically repeating what what I'm doing in the lecture. So next time, inshallah, I'm going to try with you the quantization on real images. I'm going to try with you the part about the sampling, and then we're going to start on the uh, uh, part of uh, MRI image construction. Okay. Okay, doctor. Please, uh, I didn't find uh, an activated or uh, a good uh, version of MATLAB. What can I do? Okay, I'll send you a, a link so that you can uh, find the MATLAB uh, to download from there. Okay? okay. Basically, it's a it's a hack. It's not it's not a re an original MATLAB version, but actually, uh, it should get you started. So we have no other option. So do you, do you have a computer that would support uh, um, a, a recent release of uh, MATLAB like 2020? Yes, sir. Okay, so basically, I'll, I'm going to send you the link uh, right after this lecture, and then uh, let me know if you have any problems. Uh, doctor, the uh, the course of the MATLAB fundamentals, it's a uh, course like 500. No, 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 I don't want you to do that. I, I said my last time that uh, if it's available, just take it. If it's not, that's fine. The first one will be sufficient. I know that I basically it was available before oh, okay. when we had the license, when the, the universal license was available. Now, because the universal license is not available, uh, it, it, it actually became uh, uh, basically uh, it became very expensive. So basically, if you don't have free access to it, don't do it. Okay, okay, thanks for that, Doctor. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact the Romer, and basically I'm going to agree with him or basically arrange with him to have his both his lectures on uh, Monday, and uh, I will have both my lectures on Wednesday, inshallah. I'll let you know when I confirm with you when I do that, okay? So by tomorrow, inshallah, I'll confirm with you that uh, the lecture will be on uh, Wednesday and at what, at what time, okay? At what time, okay? Okay. Yes, okay. Do you have any questions? Uh, the, uh, the, the lecture will be uploaded or not? Because I, I uh, missed, uh, That's fine, that's my, fine. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's recorded and it will be available through Blackboard. Thanks. Because uh, my internet is disconnected through the lecture. Thanks Don't a lot. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Whenever, whenever we have a lecture here, it will be recorded and you can refer to it after the lecture if you want to. Thanks a lot. Okay. Good luck, inshallah. So I'll see you on Wednesday, inshallah. Okay? Okay. Definitely. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam.